Hello, my name is John Klingen. I am the Glassfish Group Product Manager at Sun Microsystems, and this screencast is going to show you how to set up a cluster in Glassfish. In fact, from download to verifying the cluster configuration, we should be able to accomplish this in under 10 minutes. And to, to kind of prove that out, I'm going to bring up an online stopwatch to time us. There we go. So the first step is to type in uh, the Glassfish community URL into your address bar of your browser. So glassfish.jev.java.net, or you can use glassfish.org. Okay, the next step is to download the build, and since I'm on a Macintosh, we're going to download the Mac build. Okay, and to kind of prove it out here, oh, in about a minute we should have Glassfish downloaded. In the meantime, I am going to bring up um, a couple of slides to describe to you the Glassfish clustering architecture. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the actual Domain Administration Server, or DAS for short. The DAS is basically a running instance of Glassfish that manages the configuration um, of your entire cluster. Um, and in developer mode, this is also the deployment platform, but in cluster mode, which is what we're going to be installing, uh, this becomes the, the centralized point for uh, all administration. So the next step is, or, or the next piece of the architecture is how to, how to interact with the DAS. And this can be done through an administration console, a web-based administration console, through the command line, through a development tool like NetBeans or Eclipse, or through provisioning tools such as the Sun provisioning server. The other aspect of the clustering architecture is the node agent. So the node agent is basically a very lightweight instance um, of the app server that runs out on each node um, that you want to actually have um, cluster instances um, deployed to. So if you have four servers with a four node cluster, you'll install a node agent on each server. And the node agent manages the life cycle of the instances. So it will create them, start them, stop them, and destroy them. And uh, if an instance fails, it will also restart them. Okay, so now we should be just about done. Okay, 11 seconds to go. So what I'm going to do now is bring up um, a command line. And the, uh, after it's downloaded, the first step is to actually um, install the product, and that's done through the Java jar command. M dash jar downloads glassfish Darwin jar. This is going to bring up basically a license agreement that we're going to accept. There we go, and it's uncompressing and installing the application server. Now Glassfish um, comes with multiple profiles. Um, a developer profile, which is used for uh, development, so it's concerned about resource, low resource utilization and fast startup time, and uh, a cluster profile. So what we're going to do is install the cluster profile, and to do that we need ant. Glassfish actually has an ant installation with it. And so now I'm going to run ant lib ant bin ant. I'm going to run the setup cluster uh, um, ant task. Here we go. So it is actually configuring Glassfish for clustering. The next step after setting up uh, the cluster profile is to start the administration console. So I'm going to do that using the as admin command. Basically all features in Glassfish are available either through the command line as admin tool or through the admin GUI. As admin start domain. Oops. bin slash as admin start domain. After the domain administration server starts, we're going to create a node agent. Normally we would uh, do this on each physical server, but since uh, we're on just a, a Mac laptop here, we're going to create the uh, node agent just um, on the local host here. Create 
node agent. Now we want to point the node agent to talk to the administration server. So we're going to need a host, in this case localhost, and the port that it's listening on. By default that's 4848. And we have to give the node agent a name. I'm going to call it node agent 1. Now again, this is a step uh, that you're going to repeat for each uh, server um, that the node agent is installed on, where you want uh, an instance of the cluster to run. The next step is to start the node agent. Node agent 1. And the default password, master password, is change it. Okay. So at this point we're done with all the command line um, uh, usage. Everything from now on is going to be through the uh, administ web administration GUI. So let's uh, bring up uh, localhost colon 4848. This is the admin console for Glassfish. The default password is admin oops admin. And I recommend that you register the product, which we're going to do later. So the first step here, uh, now that we're in the GUI, uh, admin GUI, is to create a new cluster. We're going to call that cluster1. And the cluster is going to have two instances. So let's create two instances here. We're going to call them instance1. And it's going to be created wherever node agent1 is running, in this case on the local host, but this again could be any node agent anywhere throughout your network. Instance 2. And since we only have one agent, node agent running, it defaults to node agent 1. If you had more than one node agent, you would have more shown than just the one in the list here. And let's create the cluster. Okay, next step is to start the cluster. So we select the cluster we want to start and click Start Cluster. And this is going to take a little bit of time because we're on a single laptop here. But while this is occurring, let's bring up the stopwatch and see how we're doing. So basically in about seven minutes we've downloaded and created a cluster with Glassfish. Okay. After we uh, start the cluster, the next step is going to be to test the cluster. Let's make sure it's running properly. To do that, uh, Glassfish actually ships with a sample application called ClusterJSP. So let's go to Applications and Deploy an Application. And we're going to browse for files. Let's go to, let's see, I'm on a Mac here. Users. John Klingon, the Glassfish directory that we just created. Let's now go to Samples, Quick Start, and Cluster JSP. And we're going to load up uh, the Cluster JSP application. And what's important is that we select that availability is enabled. This will um, basically um, save the session state um, in, in case uh, uh, an app server instance fails. And that's what we're going to test. Okay, right now, um, Glassfish, the, the uh, administration console, is actually deploying the, the application to both instances. Okay, and just to go back and check, yep, both instances are running. So let's create another tab and test out the application. Localhost colon 38080, that's the default port for an instance um, in, in a cluster config, slash cluster JSP. Now what's important here is, we, is you see that we have uh, the instance that's being targeted, uh, instance 1, remember we have two instances running, and what we're going to do here is, is store some data in the HTTP session, and we're going to do that by just typing in test, test. So we have a key value pair, test equals test, you see it down here. Let's do test 2, oops, test 2, test 2, add session data. Now what we're going to do is go back to the administration console, and we know that it was on instance 1, so we're going to kill instance 1, we're going to stop it. 
Now what we're going to find out here, hopefully, is that because and this is a high availability cluster, that the session data will be available in the other instance. So you notice here that it stopped. Okay. Now let's go back here. We're going to change the port number to 38081. This is the uh, port for the second instance. Now what's, what you'll notice here is that you see instance 2 uh, is serving up this uh, session now and you'll see that the data that we saved before is still there. And just to make sure everything is running properly, let's create another one, another key value pair. There we go. So we validated the cluster config and everything in just about 10 minutes. Not bad. Hope you, hope you found this useful and if I get a chance I'll create some more of these in the future. Thank you.